Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, uh, we're inside today. It's a, just really cold outside. It's 20, 20 some degrees out. Um, supposed to be tonight, goes down to 20. Um, and that's normally what we do in the winter times. We come inside, we do some filming inside, and we do these podcast style videos for you guys. In fact, every Wednesday night all year, I do a podcast. Um, and that takes place inside Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern. It's, ta- it's called uh, Fruit Talk. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, and this is kind of the more of the format, unfortunately, that we have to do now that everything's so cold. There's nothing going on. Um, and this is a really good opportunity, I think, for you guys to learn. Um, the winter time really is a great time for learning, for planning, for taking a step back and really um, evaluating and, and uh, trying some new techniques the following season. So this is going to be a more longer form content video. Um, really a ton of information as much as I know about the flavors of figs you're gonna hear about it in this video um, so let me bring up uh, to you guys the first couple points I want to make about the flavors of figs I've kind of selected a number of different categories and we've done this video like this actually for a couple years now um, every year we learn some new things every year we expand our mind and expand our palate on food and and not just figs but you know really expand and understand what these figs are really about and in the beginning I really tried to condense things and make things um, very simple for everybody to understand but I think because I've as we've gotten more evolved and uh, we, I think a lot a lot of people understand a lot more about figs nowadays I've been trying to break them up into smaller groups and and more frequent groups um, So this spreadsheet here that we're looking at, all these different groups that we're looking at, you can find this, by the way, in the description of any video I've ever put out. This is just my growing spreadsheet. We have all kinds of different things in here, like not just the flavors of figs, but what figs I personally like the most um, in my climate. We have a fig synonym um, spreadsheet, what varieties are hardy, which of these have special characteristics, the figs that I grow and the different flavor ratings I've given them all and all different types of data on that. So this is a really interesting um, and informative spreadsheet that I let you guys, I I share with you guys. So take advantage of it. That's all I have to say. Um, I also want to say before we begin on each individual group is that um, all figs have like a, a base flavor of melon. Um, is kind of how I like to describe it. They kind of taste like cantaloupe or honeydew and have like their own little uh, figgy melon flavors. And this is a very, a very apparent when a fig is underripe. Um, there are some figs out there which retain this, uh, this melon flavor um, as they get more ripe. But in general, the more ripe they become, the less that melon flavor um, stays within the, the flavor of the fig. So if you have a, a fig and you really only taste many melon flavors, you're not tasting too many of the flavors that I'm mentioning here um, in this video, well, you're not really ripening your fig that long. Um, you really should let it hang longer before you pick it. Just be a little bit more patient. Um, something else I've noticed is that a lot of figs, as they become more ripe and more dried, um, they start to turn into something similar to like a raisin, um, something like a date, uh, a, a persimmon flavor. Um, you know, they really get these dried fruit flavors to them, um, even dried figs. You know, that's really what I would consider something that's called figginess. Um, it's kind of like a fig newton. If you ever had a fig newton, that's, I think, where that flavor comes from. And if you eat a fresh fig, you almost really don't pick a lot of that up because you really have to wait until the the fig dries up for those flavors to really come out. And there's some figs that we're going to talk about that have more of that than others. And those are a specific category that a lot of people look for. So we'll get into that. Um, I also find that with flavor, it's, it's really easy to forget about texture. And there is three main textures that I would consider three main textures but there's probably even more than that if you really wanted to get technical and um, it can be quite confusing and 
Um, I think this is largely determined by the acnes, the flowers, uh, the fl the female flower parts in the fig itself, because a fig is an inverted flower. Um, so within a flower, there's all kinds of different male and female parts, and the female parts of the of the fig um, is really where all that flavor forms. And it really determines the texture, the meatiness uh, of the pulp. And if you have really small and few acnes, the female flower parts that I'm mentioning here, they're called acnes, um, you actually will have a really dense and jammy and thick pulp. Um, a fig that's really classic with that is called the Col de Dom. It has very few and you can almost really not even tell that there's any acnes within the fig. It's really just like you're eating jam straight out of the jar. Um, and that's kind of how I would refer to most figs is that they really are a lot like jam. Um, and it's just wrapped in like the perfect crapper, cracker, which is the skin. Um, we'll get to the skin in a minute. But um, there's also another flavor profile or another texture called meaty is what I like to call it. And these have a much larger and many, many in number um, acne count. And there could be anywhere from like 100 to 500 acnes within one fig. And depending on how many, like I said, how many there are and how big they are, that's going to really determine how noticeable it is in your mouth. And these figs are really like meat, like eating like, um, you know, a piece of meat that has a lot of striations in it. Um, kind of like when you eat jackfruit, it's kind of like something you could actually turn in a, and use as a meat substitute. It's the same thing with figs. You, you can't really, I would not say to that extent, but um, they definitely feel like they, there's more to it, that there's more fig there when you bite into it. Um, and it's less jammy. It's not as, it's not as, uh, as thick. It's more of like a, a juicier um, kind of feeling in your mouth. And then we also have something that I like to call the congealed gel, which if some of these figs, and I, I've noticed that as they've gotten a bit further along in age, and, and maybe there's a, a certain point in which um, the fig is fresh, and then there's a point in which the fig is dried, somewhere in between that, the pulp can turn into like a congealed gel. And if you catch it at the right time, you can find this texture in certain figs and um, it kind of is like a lot like fruit leather, um, kind of like eating a fruit roll up. Um, so there's different textures as well as different flavors. I think it's super important because I'm personally really obsessed with the texture more than the, uh, the actual flavor, to be honest with you. Um, then there's also the skin. A lot of you guys don't eat the skin. I highly recommend that you do at least try it. Um, if you have never eaten the skin, eat the skin. Um, if you've eaten the skin, you don't like the skin, don't eat the skin. You know, uh, the skin can have its own different flavors, its own different textures, its own different nuances to it. Um, there's an entire category here that I've dedicated in the flavor grouping to figs with a, a specific skin flavor. Um, and you can have, you know, skins that are nutty or spicy or bitter. Um, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So let's start out here with the, the first category of flavors, which I've mentioned is figgy. And this is probably the most basic, the least complex, the most simple um, flavor profile that you'll find within figs. And it really is, starts out with that melon undertone. And you'll start to get that figginess, which again is things like raisins and dates and dried fruits um, that really bring out that that figginess to it. It's pretty much just a straight and simple sugar fig. Um, with all fruits, it seems like, that I've been growing, they all produce their own different type of sugar. And, you know, they could be brown sugar, it could be white sugar, it could be, you know, I've even seen um, some sugars that resemble marshmallow flavors that then turn into cotton candy. Um, some of them will be like um, caramel, um, you know, all kinds of weird sugariness to them that really express the full depth of sugar, um, of fructose. So um, it's pretty interesting that you can really find something in nature that resembles something that was kind of extracted from nature and now is sort of man-made, like cotton candy. 
you know, as an example, or like marshmallows or like uh, bubblegum. Bubblegum is another one. Bazooka bubblegum. I have plums that taste like bazooka bubblegum, or I have persimmons that taste like marshmallows. I have even some figs that taste like marshmallows. So, you know, all these weird, interesting sugar flavors are, are found in nature, believe it or not. Um, and it's not just figs, they're found in other fruits. So the figgy flavor really just has some kind of interesting sugariness in there that um, is quite different depending on the fig you're eating. Uh, but those are really the basic ones. Kind of a, a Celeste is probably a really good um, a really good representation of this variety or um, a Californian brown turkey that you can get at the store um, or you, you would normally find in California. Usually the pulp is brown. And this is another big thing that um, really translates over well to what I'm talking about is the color of the pulp. Um, the color of the skin really doesn't matter all that much. I haven't seen any kind of, um, you know, any kind of meaning in the, the color of the skin in, in terms of how that translates over to the flavor. It is, however, more likely than not if you have a, you know, like a, a, light, a light colored skin, you're going to have certain colors on the inside. It's also more likely if you have a brown colored skin, you're going to have certain flavors on the inside. So, the, the skin can just kind of tell you what's on the inside. and But the interior color of the pulp is really what's going to determine the flavor. And with all fruits, with all vegetables, the color really does determine the flavor. Um, you know, and I, I kind of see uh, eating these figs or looking at the interior. This is why I cut them open. This is why you can really see them all cut open here in my hands is that I really like to look at the interior of the fig before I eat it, not just to check for like bugs or mold or spoilage or anything like that. Um, I like to really know in my mind going into eating the fig what it should taste like before I eat it. And, you know, sometimes it can be a surprise. Sometimes it's spot on. But it's kind of like drinking some wine in that you look at a, a glass of wine and, you you know, people look at the legs, they look at the color, they look at all kinds of different things and then they have an idea of what this wine should taste like and then they drink it they taste it they smell it and then that confirms what they had seen with their eyes so for me usually a figgy flavor or a caramel flavored fig a brown colored fig is going to correspond to something like that something that's pretty simple primitive uh not that complexly flavored that's a lot like uh um, a lot like a figgy fig Newton, you know, I think that's pretty a pretty good way to put it. The next category is caramel. And uh, this is pretty similar to figgy. It's it's not really all that different. Um, the only difference here is that there's a pretty noticeable form of caramel in the fig. The fig produces its own nectar, if you can believe that. And you can really see it on a number of these varieties here. It's pretty glistening throughout the fig. Sometimes it's pulled up in the in the void of the fig, which is this little hole right here. You can see a, a, a visual of a pool of honey, a pool of liquid, nectar, um, however you'd like to put it. I think nectar is probably the most accurate term. Um, you can see even sometimes honey is dripping from the eye of the fig. This is pretty common. And uh, it seems like the nectar that this particular category produces tastes a lot like caramel. Um, so there's not just different sugar flavors that these figs can produce, but there's also different honey flavors that these figs can produce, which is really quite something. I mean, this is such a complex and interesting fruit that... Um, you really can't, you're really probably sitting here and thinking to yourself, holy crap, I got to try these fruits. Well, you do. Um, you know, and this is like, I put a lot of thought into this and I've eaten a lot of figs and I always really obsess with the flavor of this stuff because it really is such an interesting fruit. You can't really get at the store unless you grow it yourself to this quality and to this um, extent that I'm talking here about. You know, you really have to pick these things straight off the tree at the appropriate ripeness to even get the flavors that I'm even talking about right now. 
Some figs won't even produce a nectar if you pick them too early. Um, some figs won't produce a nectar at all. You know, that's where there's so much different genetic variability out there. It's pretty interesting. And, and not only does that get affected by the genetics, but also where the fig is growing itself. You know, um, the climate, the soil, the water, all that really plays a big part in the flavor. And I'll say real quickly, less water is always better in terms of the bricks of the fruit. Um, we should be dry farming our fruits. We'll have sweeter fruits, higher quality fruits. Um, a soil that's well draining that also holds a lot of moisture that has a good mineral content. A lot of those mineral content, uh, you know, things like magnesium and calcium, different minerals found throughout the soil, just like growing grapes to make into wine. It's going to take that mineral content and insert that a little bit into the fruits. So, um, you know, it's good to pay attention to your soil, but also to the sunlight and to the heat. Those two really affect how the fig ripens and how it performs and um, even just the metabolism very simply of the, the fig tree itself. Um, so really quite important and interesting um, things that you should know about that. But we can move on now to um, the light honey category. And the honey category, I guess we could start off with though, because this is a bit Maybe these are a bit out of order of what I'd probably like to go in, but the, the honey category is a very classic group of figs. You're going to find this quite often. Uh, the Dotato fig is really the most common. It's like a thousand plus year old fig in Italy um, that's been spread all throughout the world. It goes by many names like uh, Cadota. Um, you can get this fig even at Lowe's as an example. This one really does taste a lot like honey. Um, take a lot of those melon flavors that I mentioned. It kind of holds on to that melon flavor pretty well. And then it's really sweetened by honey. That's pretty similar to like bee honey. Some of the honey can resemble like an agave honey. Um, again, in different forms of like honey that I'm talking about here, right? Like the, the caramel was like a, a caramel type honey um, this is more of like a, like a bee honey and sometimes it can be quite dark and that's kind of how I view the honey fig category is that it actually it actually is a lot like a bee honey where more of like an agave honey is more lighter and more refreshing and not as uh, rich um, so that's kind of where I, I go here with the with the light honey category is that it has a lot of those melon tones, those honey tones, but it's a bit lighter. And because it's not as rich, you really can bring out some other complexities within the light honey category that I think personally make it a bit superior. Um, so something like, you know, you might even get some citrus in there, some tanginess in there. Um, some weird little complexities that come out. And one of my favorites in this is Zafiro and Sweet Joy. Sweet Joy is actually probably the most uniquely tasting fig I've ever had. Um, it's really quite strange, including the skin. I mean, it really is a weird one. Um, and that kind of brings us, I guess, to the skin here in that I have a category talking about spicy or bitter skin. And um, the pulp is really its own little animal because um, the pulp is going to have its own flavor, but with these particular figs, the skin's so distinct and weird that um, I'm only really talking about the skin. And it, it you know, you can have a, a berry fig that we're going to get to in, in a minute, which are these red figs down here towards the end. These red interior figs taste a lot like a berry. Um, and you can have a berry fig with this weird skin. In fact, uh, the Dal Oso and Ruchiola de Elba are both berry figs, but they have a, a skin that is really quite strange. I find that the Dal Oso is a lot like a, a cinnamon. Like it's like a, a berry fig that's wrapped in cinnamon um, or like a persimmon flavor. The Ruchiola de Elba and White Marseille is really weird in that it's quite bitter on the skin. Um, and it kind of, that bitterness and that skin quality, I think, is brought out more when there's a bit cooler conditions outside. Um, Sweet Joy has a weird, interesting spiciness and slight bitterness to the skin. LSU Purple has like a, a weird spice flavor to it. Again, 
with the skin. Um, and let's move on now to these berry figs because there's quite a few here that really can be broken down. Uh, we have a fruity berry fig, we have a melon berry fig, a bordeaux berry, light berry, tropical, cherry, fruity honey, um, elegant berry. I mean, there's a really a quite mix of these berry figs. And I think that's mostly because of uh, what has been propagated and grown throughout the world. I think most people, most collectors, I should say, most fig hobbyists that are growing many varieties really love the berry figs more than the honey figs or the, the figgy figs, right? You got the brown interior, you got the yellow or amber interior in the honey figs, and then you have these red interior figs or orange interior figs, and those are, are more along the lines of the berry figs. And um, I've done a few polls and I've asked a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people, and I can definitively say that the, the fig community as a whole really loves the berry figs the most and this is a little strange because if you were to talk to somebody in Italy or somewhere in Europe maybe like Portugal Spain they may have grown up with only one fig and that's all they know that's what they like uh, a honey fig to them is the best whereas these berry figs they're not really that too big of a fan of where if you've kind of approached this in a different way um, this is not a fruit to you that really evokes some memory and evokes some feeling um, of your childhood or feeling of good good thoughts. This is something that was more like like a nice wine, you know. That um, I personally view, even I, I even myself, I personally view these berry figs to just be um, superior in most cases um, to just have a much more pleasant um, eating experience. So um, let's kind of get into the berry category here. And when, I, and when I mentioned berry is that I'm talking a lot about any sort of berry that you can think of. And it's kind of interesting and it's quite difficult to pinpoint the exact berry that I'm speaking of. And people get into that pretty crazy when they talk about wine and, you know, they, they talk about things like current and and um, you know blueberries and cherries and and all kinds of weird interesting berries that if I were to taste them out in my backyard I'm not really tasting that or even smelling that in any of these wines I'll tell you that right now um, and um, you could maybe make an argument that with enough time and patience and you know maybe this was in liquid form or something maybe you could really pick a lot of that up and uh, you know, maybe in the future we'll do something like that. But for the most part, I think just labeling this as different types of berry is probably the best way to go about it. Um, I don't know. I've I put a decent amount of thought into that, and it's kind of difficult to really, really put into words unless you've tasted these things. I mean, they're 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 not like when I taste this wine as an example. You know, I'm picking up a different fruitiness different fruits that i could name off but uh in a fig it seems to be really not that necessary um even in a, in a, in a glass of wine you know we're not like some Som sommeliers here guys you know we're we're um this is a, a more broad sense of uh of berry let's say that um so i guess we could start off with a fruity berry and this is like a, a berry, like a bunch of berries that I would consider like grapes or, or strawberries that kind of resemble like a fruit punch. Um, but not really like a fruit punch that's kind of that acidic. Uh, we'll get to like an acidic fruit punch in a moment. This is like you took a fruit punch that was made out of uh, strawberries and grapes. And it, it really wasn't that acidic and... Um, I guess that means, you know, you got to kind of be specific to like what grape you're talking about and what strawberry you're talking about. But maybe like, let's say like an artificial, an artificial strawberry flavor. That's probably a good, uh, a good example. And these, these berry figs are usually more lighter in color, you know, maybe more on the, the light red side, like the bright red side. Um, and they really do taste a lot like strawberries. I think this is a pretty good fruit to really compare them to you, you really bite into this and you you really get the opinion that you're tasting a strawberry jam um 
you know, I also get the feeling sometimes I'm tasting like a conquered grape. Um, you know, sometimes it, it really does remind me of, um, you know, some kind of grape flavor that I'm just not too familiar with. Um, so it's really fruity. It's, you know, a, a fruity is a pretty good definition for even some wine. So um, translate that over to these figs and you'll you'll understand what I'm saying. Uh, the melon berry here, this is a fig that is pretty misunderstood, these these bunch of figs. There's actually a lot more than two of them that I've, I've listed there. Because um, a lot of them are pretty similar to each other, and they can go by different names, and they're they're kind of the same, but they're really not the same. That's a whole different topic for another day. But um, these are figs that really hold on to that melon flavor for most of the ripening process of the fig, and they may actually keep a lot of that when everything's said and done. Um, they're very sweet figs, and um, they really need a longer time to ripen uh, for, for most of them, not all of them. And then when they're when it's all said and done, they're, they're going to have like that, that melonness in there, some high sweetness, and then also like a, a fruity or a light berry flavor to it. Um, and that's usually the, the dominant flavor at that point is actually a berry flavor. But if you pick them too early, you're going to be upset. You're going to be disappointed. Because you're really only going to pick up a lot of that melonness in there, and and not a lot of the rest of it that that comes with it as it matures on the tree. Um, the Bordeaux berry, this is a, a category that um, a lot of people, a lot of fig growers came up with and said that because these two Bordeaux figs that come from the Bordeaux region of France, it's one is called Ron de Bordeaux, the other one's called Violette de Bordeaux. Um, these two are so popular in the fig community and they have such an interesting and complex berry flavor to it, kind of like a, like a raspberry. Um, they named them after the region that they came from, so then thus was born the name of this flavor profile. And I've kind of stuck with it because it, it does make sense, uh, but I've also called this category the complex berry category. Um, but to be honest with you, a lot of these are very complex that, um, if I really were to say that this was the, the, this was the complex berry category, I think I'm taking away from some of these others that are really just as complex or even more complex. Um, but usually again, it's, it, this is a fig that is like really dark red on the inside. It could even be purple on the inside. And again, it has a lot of raspberry tones in it. I think that's a good fruit um, to really compare this. It also can taste a lot like plums. So those are the two fruits I think will really translate well over to this. Um, the next category is the light berry category. And this is a like a more light and refreshing berry flavor that is then added into something that's quite figgy. Um, so you can take, you know, like a Celeste in this category or, um, you know, something like a brown turkey, and then you can add in some light berry flavors to it and you'll end up with something in this light berry category. It's just not as an intense berry flavor. Um, it's a lot like the fruitiness, um, that you'll find in the fruity berry category. So a lot like a grape or a strawberry, but it's just not really that intense. And it really has that interesting complexity, I think more because it's more subtle, it's more nuanced, not as complex, um, quite layered flavor that you can find with a whole bunch of different sugars and different honeys within them. Um, that's pretty quite, it's quite layered within the flavor of the fig. And all of these figs, by the way, even though we've stopped talking about honey and we've stopped talking about sugar, all these berry figs, again, have their own little weird berry or their own little weird sugarness to them, their own little weird honey flavors to them that's then combined with these berry intensities um, and different berry flavors. Then we also have a, a tropical berry category. And this one really is quite tropical. Like it, it really does taste like a fruity tang almost. It's pretty fruity, um, but it's also acidic. So this is a lot like a fruit punch, um, you know, kind of like a pineapple or a peach or other tropical fruits. Um, this is what these taste like. And um, usually the flavor 
or the interior I should say on these is more orange um, when you have like a more orangey colored pulp you're going to notice that there's going to be some weird fruitiness and potentially even some acidity in there um, that's quite interesting you know the light berry category the interior pulp is usually like a combination of of brown and red or brown and pink or maybe it's just pink um, you know the melon berry category is quite pink um, not necessarily red it can get red as it fully matures uh, but it still retains a lot of that pinkness in there and then you have uh, the cherry candy category and I don't really know how else to put it but this category really tastes like cherry candy like uh, like a cherry for sure but a, but an artificial cherry um, in fact it's almost so artificial that it's it's scary like uh, a lot of cherry candies that I've had and I maybe like a like a cherry airhead or uh, you know like a um, People have said it, it reminds them of a Cherry Jolly Rancher. Um, you know, I don't even know if there is a Cherry Jolly Rancher out there, but I'll tell you this, it does have like an artificial cherry flavor that's quite noticeable. And again, it's just like a type of berry is, is really what I like to put it. And this one's a bit difficult to really tell visually that it's going to have this flavor. You can't really tell by looking at it. Um, it's quite a shock. It's quite a surprise. At least I haven't really been able to tell Actually, there is a little bit of way you can tell with it is that it's it's got like a like a lighter red color, like a bright red, kind of like a fruity berry fig, but it's even brighter and even lighter and even has like a um, a little bit of pink in there. It's quite interesting. Um, and they they're all across the board like that. This one's pretty dark, this particular fig, but that's not normal for uh, for what I've been seeing with these varieties here and then we have the the fruity honey category so you can see a lot of these are pretty fruity flavors you know we have a, a fruity honey um, the tropical is quite fruity light berry is pretty fruity and um, melon berry is quite fruity you know it's um, it's difficult I think in this because it I'm just saying it's fruity but there's it's difficult to really pinpoint which exact berry flavor like which berry I'm speaking of you know that we talked about prior but I think you know some of these can really in large part be described as a strawberry you know um, so tropical you know maybe you can say that that's like a strawberry combined with a pineapple or um, you know light berry is like a strawberry combined with um, some weird sugar and melons and, and figginess and then the fruity honey take a strawberry that's not that intense and then add in your standard honey fig so you get like this this almost like this dark honey flavor in there or even a, a light honey agave flavor in there combined with a, a fruity berry fig and this is one of my favorite categories it was new to me last year it's quite pleasant to eat it's hard to find um, I've only really found it in these three figs so far I also have the the last one here is probably the most complex the most interesting this is the one that I look for the most and when I'm eating a fig and this is for me it gets the highest taste reviews as well because it really is just the best and this is across the board with all fig growers the one that um, will get the highest reviews across the board um, there's a fig out there for those of you guys who know, it's uh, it's called Black Madeira, and this is highly regarded as the the best tasting fig for years um, across many many growers. It's undoubtedly I don't know a single person who doesn't like it. It's just so good. If you like figs, you will like this fig, um, and it really does have this elegant berry flavor to it. And I actually like to call this the wine berry category because it really does taste like a, a wine more so than the the Bordeaux berry category in my opinion I think people were a bit mistaken by the Bordeaux berry category in fact I think it should just be called like I said the complex berry category and then this one here should be renamed to like something involving wine um, because it really is 
the most intricate and, uh, and and elegant. It really is an elegant flavor to it. You put it in your mouth, and you really it really makes you think. Wow, nature created this. You know, um, this is really where people can go nuts with uh, with figs and and growing figs and wanting to have this experience and going through crazy challenges of of growing figs in places you shouldn't be growing them because this is a without a doubt it's just above and beyond uh, what anyone could expect from a piece of fruit Uh, it really is something and here I have like a really a pretty long list of figs that fit this flavor description Um, so I guess this is a pretty hard one to describe and I would say it's something along the lines of a a raspberry, but also a strawberry, and the berry flavor really does rem like it's like an elegant wine, you know. Um, it's almost like it melts in your mouth, like it really hits your mouth and coats everything, and really makes again like you sit there and wonder, you know, wow, that came from nature. Um, and I think there's a part of it somehow in there that the nectar of the fig really combines with that flavor and makes it at the right amount to make it quite elegant and i think that's what that i think that's what happens here i'm not entirely convinced um but it's the kind of the combination of the two that really sell it for me and sometimes you can have like a black madeira as an example that has so much nectar that you're eating just straight honey it feels like um but a lot of times you can get some black madeiras that that have less amounts of nectar and it really blends well with the pulp and it it and um it's almost like a sticky almost like a stickiness to it um ah it just it just really does a um you know, it's this is a, a, a fig, at least from this category, I'll be growing for the rest of my life. You know, if I go a certain length of time without eating a fig from this particular category, uh, I'll be really, I'll be pretty upset. And there's no other food that I've ever had that really can mimic this. It's just, it's just impossible. Um, at least from what I've tasted. And uh, yeah, it's just quite interesting. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one because this is really the the flavors of figs. This is like six years of growing figs and tasting well over 200 varieties of figs and um, not just from my own climate and from other climates and um, really obsessing over this and thinking about this as much as I can and, um, you know, trying to put this into the best way that I, I can for all of you guys to really understand what it is that uh, that I'm eating. So, all right, we'll talk to you soon, guys. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the blog. This whole thing is going to be there on the blog. We're going to post something about it there, maybe more of our thoughts as uh, as time goes on. Figboss.com. We'll see you soon. Um, Take care, everybody. See you for tomorrow's video.